the more that I look at this reality, the less real it it, it looks to me. And uh, it, be, it actually is beginning to look a little bit like a computer simulation. But that's another story. Well, yeah, but that's the, another story that I was just getting ready to bring up because I want to tell you, my feeling after looking at this world and my own experiences for the last 55 years of looking at the occult or hidden world, I was going to say the same words that I am totally convinced for myself that we are living in some kind of a computerized holographic universe. Something's going on which has never even crossed the minds of the human race but is beginning to become apparent to me that it's too well coordinated, too many things, there's too much smoke not to be a fire. And, uh, you know, I've seen, I've been told, look at, I've been told by people, uh, in particular, one man in particular who does it well, the future. And when he tells me what's going to happen in the future, it's in minute detail. Sometimes a year to a year and a half or more in, 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 uh, in the future. But it's in detail telling me exactly where I'm going to be, what I'm going to be wearing, who I'm going to be with, what they're going to say, and where the car will be, et cetera, et cetera. And he goes into minute detail and, and sure enough, a year and a half later, exactly on the day he said, at exactly the same time he said, there I am in exactly the, the, the situation he laid out a year and a half before, word for word. And so when I tell people that, they usually come up with the question, well, how does he do that? I don't care how he does that. The question is, what does that tell you about your life? What does that tell you about the world you live in? If somebody can see and die and and minute detail something a year and a half ahead of time i don't know what that tells me what do you well, think <laughs> i think i think you know it's it's like your um it's like your life is a program that's already been written and your death has been planned and every single event that you go through is, is somehow has this weird kind of planned look to it if you actually are perceptive enough to examine you know all the nasty right. and and, mm-hmm. and nice turns that your life has taken and the strange times when it may have seemed like you were getting some kind of invisible help uh you know and you're like where whoa, 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 who's helping me here you know how did i make that decision <coughs> excuse me and oh, i think that, right. that uh um that's why, you know, as I get more and more thinking about reality, more and more strikes me that we're in some kind of uh, pre-planned thing where nothing is by accident. And, you know, you, you get to where you get to and you're like, well, if I hadn't done this back then. And then you realize that also there's times when you've pushed, something has pushed you to go a certain way uh, against your own will. And if you hadn't gone that way again, you would not have discovered certain kinds of, you know, things, research and things. That's right. That's and, exactly and, right. Exactly. That. And, and again, think about that word research. It's not search. It's research. It's, okay, we're, we're searching it again? Well, what does that mean? And, <laughs> and I think that that, again, kind of indicates that we're talking about some kind of pre-program where you are not searching. You are trying to figure out what the hell a program is and uh, so that you don't have to, uh, um, you know, uh, again, uh, one of the analogies that I like to use because I used to live in Southern California when I was a young man and uh, really liked to go surfing is that, you know, a good surfer is not a, uh, an athletic guy, although he should be athletic, but that won't really determine if you're a good surfer. A good surfer is not a guy who, you know, is uh, bold and brave, although you need courage to be a good surfer. What a good surfer is, it's a guy who knows 
that it's the wave driving everything, not him. And that all you really have to do to be a good surfer is imagine where that wave is going and navigate your way through it and uh, let the wave do all the work. And I think life is a lot like that. You just kind of have to go where you're pushed. And yeah. it t- it's taking you in a direction. And you're just like, well, I don't know why I'm going in this direction. I guess I'm just better to enjoy the ride because um, I have no idea what's going on. That's, and, my, know, that's my feeling, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it happens every day to me. I mean, I go through, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm producing like four or five different uh, television programs. I'm writing a whole series on the series uh, Secret Space Program, which is going to be out, um, I think, on Monday on Gaia.com. And, uh, you know, it's like a real roller coaster of up and down and, and elation and terror. And uh, it, it's... It's not like an even, happy, blissful trip. It's uh, anything but. It's 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 a, a white knuckle ride a lot of times. <laughs> Boy, is it ever! Yeah, you know, I've I've gotten so many. I, you know, what makes me know and feel that uh, uh, that it's some kind of a computerized program is because too many things have happened that would have had to have happened many many years ago in order for it to be the right thing at the right place today when I discover it. Classic example is Richard Hoagland <clears throat> talks about uh, the 19.5 uh, configuration on the moon and the earth, etc. And, and we've yeah. talked, he and I have talked about that 19.5. Well, one time he told me, actually, it's, it's even more finer than that. It's 19.5.25. So you go on the web and, po- and type that in, 19.5.25, and it does tons of stuff about uh, NASA, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so he's right. But what's strange is that when I was looking at that on the computer, it dawned on me, my address is 19525 Ventura Boulevard. And you know, the the building must be 80 years old, so somebody had to have built that building a long time ago and it was given that number 19525 so that you know a couple of years ago when I move in it has to do with uh, with uh, some sort of a uh, an astronomical calculations and who would have known that I moved into right. 19.5.25 so it just it just amazes me all of the synchronicity and strangeness that you know, that, uh, and I, of course, I have dreams. I've had dreams uh, where I see myself someplace, and then uh, eventually, a couple of days later, there I am, where I saw myself. At, Same here. Yeah. It happens a lot. I have, um, you know, I, what's happened to me, one of the things that, you know, can convinces me that there were something funny going on here is that uh, if you if you examine my name, uh my name is uh, J, three letters, and then Widener, which is seven letters for, uh, I guess you could say, the number's 37. And uh, if you go into numerology, or not numerology, if you go into sacred geometry and you begin looking, you realize that 30, uh, uh, seven is the, uh, is the edges of a cube, and that's three dimensions. And then if you draw a 12 around that, you have 19, which is time, because the moon goes in 19-year cycles. If you go the next level and put another circle around the cube uh, in the center, uh, you then have 37, a total of 37 uh, points on this thing. And 37 is the manifestation of uh, how it's a fifth dimension and it's the number of manifestation. And if you look at, at numbers, you can see that all of the numbers like 111, 222, 333, 444, 666, et cetera, all the way to 999 um, are multiples of 37, exact multiples. And you can see, and if you um, examine like the numerology of the opening uh, chapter or just the opening of, uh, of Genesis, 
uh, is all the numbers are 37 multiples. And that's all about how God manifests the world, right? Let there be light and all that. And uh, so, you know, then I'm constantly, then I'm also, uh, uh, one of the films I'm most famous for is being uh, in the film about The Shining called Room 237. Right, in which Kubrick renamed, you know, the room from the Stephen King novel to, you know, for some mysterious reason, to 37, which of course is exactly the number of miles that the moon used to, they used to think the moon was from the earth, 237,000 miles. So, I mean, you, you start seeing that, like, your past self is trying to send some kind of weird messages to you, uh, uh, so that uh, you, you can understand the uh, uh, kind of oblique nature of reality uh, and guide you. And these things are just constant with me uh, to the point where it's almost like a Marx Brothers movie. You just have to start laughing because there's so many synchronicities flying and uh, and messages uh, of odd nature. Again, making me think that there's some kind of something with the program. And then, of course... We have the new Mandela effect, which I don't know if you know about. But yeah, I've heard about it. I've yeah, heard about I mean, I'll it. tell you, the, the only one I've seen that really makes me doubt reality is the Moonraker one where the bad guy, Jaws, uh, meets the girl, and she smiles, and she has braces, and then they hold hands, and they walk away. I remember that. Yeah, she doesn't have braces anymore, and I'm just—it's the dangiest thing I've ever seen. And apparently, even the VHSs don't have the braces. So I'm trying to really try to figure out, yeah, well, what the point of the scene is if she doesn't have braces, and uh, two, how the heck does, does someone come in here and change it, and why? What's the point? And again, it makes me—it points to this kind of plasticity that reality it has become. And this is the other point, and you're old enough to know that the reality wasn't as plastic 20 years, 30 years, 40 years ago as it is now. Now reality has become a very kind of kind of a putty that can be manipulated by everybody instead of, you know, and I'm not sure that where this is going to go because it looks like it's just going to go into chaos at some point. Yeah, and it's already pretty well there, and it's getting worse by the day. That's why I feel that there's something bad. Uh, maybe it's computerized to happen, but something is getting ready to happen to the whole human family, the entire uh, superstructure of life on the earth, and especially human life, is now really in question. Well, I, I'm not sure we even understand what it is human life is really all about and who we are as humans. I mean, it's the the the, uh, the feeling is so strong right now for me. You can cut it with a knife. I just feel something bad is coming. Something, yeah. some kind of a conclusion to uh, to the system. You know. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I I feel that, but at the same time. You know, there's this, um, well, we know what's going on in Europe and we know, we can see, you know, that Europe is about of to course. fold and, of you know, course. it will come here too. Uh, it won't be as fast, but it's coming. And, uh, uh, this is all being done and designed on purpose. Of course. And, um, you know, it's a cry and shame. We're going to lose our culture right in front of us, but maybe the culture wasn't worth saving if we're not willing to fight for it. 